Hello? Wheel yeah. spin. So, someone, yeah. Still have the wheel? Hello? Hello. Stacy. <laughs> Hi. What yeah. up? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, this is Stacy D from Bad Cop, Bad Cop. What up? Um, <clears throat> how are you? I'm Get doing good. How are you? Doing well. Um, all right. So, do you remember me? Who is this? My, this is Tim. Tim, yeah, of course I do. Okay. What's going on? Uh, we met at the <laughs> Discovery. Okay. In oh, right. Hey. right. Okay. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um. And then we we interviewed your guys' band uh, for the magazine. Okay. Okay. So how are you? How is everything? Good, dude. Working super hard on the Warp Tour right now. It's gnarly. Where are you guys at? <laughs> we are in Orlando, Florida. Whoa. Uh, how many dates are you guys on? All of it. Hell from yeah. beginning to end. <laughs> well, we will... We are... How is everything out there in Florida? Humid? Uh, in Florida, it's hot. It's like, it's crazy. It's like the afternoons are a big zit. And by 4 o'clock, it pops. And it just rains like fucking mad. It's like you can feel the pressure of how hot and how humid it is. It's like no wonder there are hurricanes out here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if it doesn't rain, then it's going to be like a bomb. We'll all die. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> Yeah, I'd be more worried if a hurricane didn't happen. Then fucking the world's really gonna it's go gonna to shit like for sure. Right <laughs> um, how do you, how is your experience with the Warp Tour going at this moment? With the bands? Yes. It's awesome. Everybody that we've met, from everybody on our stage, which is kind of like the punk rock stage we're playing on, the, it's called the Hard Rock Stage because it's from the the Hard Rock Casino, I believe, is sponsoring it. But. Um, Everybody that's on our stage, we've got like sick of it all strung out. The adolescents, anti flag, us, um, valiant Thor, uh, municipal waste. We've got some killer fucking bands, and everybody has just been it has been great. And then everybody that's on other stages that we've met has been great as well. People have come to watch us play. We go see other people play. It's like it's a real big, helpful, honestly nice. People tour. <laughs> awesome. Um, do you guys? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm have. I drink too much uh, Gatorade, and my saliva is like thick. So I'm trying to swallow. <laughs> Lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I end up seeing you guys at Discovery and Ventura. You guys opened up for um, <laughs> face to face. Face to face. Leftover correct. No, yeah, yeah. Face, face to face. face. And I was floored. Like I was. Totally in awe by your guys' performance and, and your songs, Thanks. and I I really got every single one of your CDs now, and I did a little research awesome. about you specifically, um, and and just amazing. Um, you had you had recently overcome um, addiction. Is that correct? It's true. I still smoke some weed, so I'm not going to say I'm 100 percent, you know, teetotal, but. Uh, I gave up everything else, everything. I was on uh, Xanax pres prescribed by the doctor for like seven, eight years. I just decided to check out a life, and it was such a bummer. And I was such a sad, like, sick person for so long. I just kept telling myself, you know, I'm broken, and I'm this, you know, just sad, sick artist. And, and I was very negative most of my life. And then I got the opportunity to get better and get off the stuff. And Fat Records, you know, they sent me... They, they paid for me to go to detox to get off of everything. And in doing so, I learned so many lessons about myself, but I was so scared, uh, so scared of, for my life. Finally, I, I had been very, like, suicidal most of my life and um, just very dark, a very dark person. Funny, still with, I still had a, a spirit that people really loved and, you know, liked to be around, but I was just felt like a hamster on a wheel that wasn't getting anywhere. I was just never able to, to appreciate anything that I had accomplished, and I just, uh, I was a mess. So in, in getting better, I got so scared of, for my life because I didn't know what was happening to me, and it wasn't that I wanted to, to still use drugs. I didn't. In fact, I, I didn't ever want to do that again um, because of what I did to myself. Like, I did so much damage to my brain 
with the Xanax. Um, I, so I, it wasn't only that that I was on. I was, you know, doing blow and I was doing pills, Ooh, other good. pills, and I was mixing a lot of stuff and drinking mm-hmm. sometimes. And um, so, but the Xanax was the one thing that was a constant every day, you know, and it changes your brain chemistry, like, a lot. So I was, what did I you felt notice? like I was going to, oh, man, like, I, I was hearing stuff that wasn't there, I was seeing stuff that wasn't there, and I was sober. So my brain was, like, really fighting to come back to whatever this reality that we all share Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, I mean, and it's still a few, you know, it's not like I'm still kind of like walking around, like, uh, but um, I'm doing a lot, a lot, lot better. I'm doing better than I ever was when I was on it, that's for sure. And I don't really remember a lot from when I was on it, and I don't re- remember a lot um, from before. Uh, I do remember a lot more from before I was on it than when I was on it, that those like seven, eight years are just completely gone. I can't even remember how many years it was, but I know it was in that that range um so yeah i mean i had to learn to what was what was the the breaking point for you where you said you know what this is not for me no more this is not cool like i really need to stop the universe made that decision for me i didn't really do it i I was on the fat 25 year tour with my band we were finally getting to to, you know, go out with all the bands that we wanted to play with. We were finally getting a chance to get some notoriety for all the hard work that we put in. Um, and I was just like this exhausted. It was overnight drives and we were in a van and we had to load in by like noon every day. And so I, again, I was, I was drinking, I was doing Xanax and Klonopin. I was doing painkillers. I was doing cocaine and it, I just, was like this monster. And then the last day I, uh, the, well, the last day I was there, it was in Minneapolis. I, uh, got in a fight with every single person, turns out, that was on the tour or there. Like, I got kicked out of the venue. I mean, I'm 115 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you've got to be a terror to be not, to not have, to Come have on. everybody yeah. not want to be around you. So I, um, uh, I fought everybody. And I got in a fight with my band, and I uh, ended up on a puddle on my back in the rain with a ruptured ACL and and a fractured kneecap. Mm-hmm. And I was I was laying there screaming, and and then we went back to the I got taken back to the hotel, and I was telling everybody, "Fuck you, I'm done." Apparently, um, I don't remember a lot of it, but I got back to the hotel room, and I just wanted to die. So I took a lot more pills, and I started cutting at my wrist and it was awful and um you know people got in touch with my parents and i had called my dad to tell him goodbye i remember that and then i got taken to the emergency room where um i found out that you know i already had knee problems because i probably had ruptured my my acl a few years prior Mm -hmm. um but i this was re-injured and now it had a, a fractured kneecap so i was in a lot of pain but um, I got flown from Minneapolis, leaving my band behind, and I got flown out of there. And they had to drive home with no shows, no no opportunity to make money, no nothing. So I just, you know, I totally fucked them over. I fucked over everybody. So when I got home, and prior to this, I must say that, like, my cousin, um, who's, like, a, a year and a half younger than me, and was, like, my first best friend in life, died, uh, like, three days into the drive of the tour. So I was in the van for three days and then I got a call in the middle of, I was in the middle of the country by my mom saying that my cousin died and I, um, I didn't know how to feel. So I just kept taking more pills and I kept buying sunglasses for whatever reason. I just kept, that was how I mourned. (laughs) I just would go buy like three, four pairs of sunglasses at a time at every truck stop. And then, you know, so I was already desperately sad, more sad than normal. And then I got uh, home, went to his funeral, and when I got home from that, I uh, got the ultimatum from my band that said, you need to go to rehab or you, we're not going to be in a band with you anymore. And I freaked out, and I, um, I didn't know what to do. So I called some people, and I was like, what do I do? And the band was not going for any of it, so they came in on Jenny's birthday and, and gave me an intervention. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll do it. I'll go. The band, you guys, and the band is that important to me. 
Like, music's never turned its back on me. I'm not going to turn my back on it. So I went and spent 10 days by myself in this, not by myself, there was, it was, it was a co-ed. And I met some great people and some really scary people, and it was a life-altering situation, so much so that when I got out, um, it was sensory overload, and I just, I got so scared. I couldn't be on my own. I couldn't do anything. I was like a child again. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't do anything. So I made my mom come down. I made my boyfriend come, and I made my roommate stay with me for at least five days in a row. Like, I couldn't be al- I couldn't ever be alone. Like, I was so scared. So they got me through it, and I got myself into therapy, and uh, that's it, and here I am. <laughs> How has your lyrical um, <clears throat> style changed since, you know, this incident? Well, it's it's pretty, it's a good question. Um, I always came from, before, I always came from a place of negativity in writing, you know what I mean? Like, And I guess I really didn't ever take so, so, so much time on the lyrics where I should have because it really makes a difference. Like, I'm a person that listens to melody more than anything else when I hear a song. So I could hear a song for a year and not know, even know the lyrics. And sometimes when I find out the lyrics, it ruins the song for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same so, way. Okay, cool. So so sometimes, like, so I just, you know, attributed that with my writing sometimes. It was like, yeah, I said some good stuff here and there, but it was never anything that was, like, really deep and thought, thought-provoking. So when we this record, I was really scared because I don't want to write from a place of negativity anymore. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a positive, happy person now, which is amazing. So I had problems, and I said, guys, I need, I need help. And uh, I told my band, I told uh, Davey, who's our producer, and I told Scott Mike, who produced the record, our new record as well. I said, you guys, I need help, and I super got it. Like, I had ideas, and I had melodies, and I had some lyrics, and um, like the song, I don't know, have you heard our new record? Warriors? Yeah. Yes. I heard a, a couple songs. So, I haven't heard the whole thing all the way through. Okay. Well, there's a song, first song on the second side, it's called Broken. Mm-hmm. And it, it really explains everything. Like, I, I, came, I came up with the, the chorus, I'm broken, what an easy way out. And I thought, well, I'm not broken anymore, so I don't want to write a song about being a broken person. And, um... I let it. I left it alone. I, did, I just. I didn't want to go any further with the song. And then, when we were looking for songs, you know, going through all of my songs for the record, uh, that one came up. My boyfriend was like, "Stacy, baby, you got to do this song." And I was like, "Well, I, you know, I don't. I don't know what to do with it." So I went and I took it to Davey, and he was like, "Awesome, we're doing the song." So instead of saying like, I, I did it past tense. Like I blamed it on humanity. I blamed it on heredity. I blamed it on these things instead of taking accountability for myself and making sure that I had a good fucking life no matter what was going on around me, instead of, like, you know, justifying every, every, and making explanations and, and not living up to my, you know, living up to my side of the, my side of it, of all of it. So mm-hmm. I wrote it from that perspective and turned what would have been a negative into an extremely positive piece of self-realization. <laughs> Freaking a. And in, and in a smart and intelligent way, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you guys uh, you guys have also went political uh, a little bit on this one as well. Yeah. Uh, well, we're four women. Right now is a really weird time. Yes. Um, what, do, what do you feel about uh, the state of our country? I am going to be optimistic and say that I don't think that um, as much as I wanted Hillary to win or Bernie, you know what I mean? Um, I don't believe that the conversations that we're having now would be happening had we went with the status quo. Um, It's it's almost sometimes better to rip the Band-Aid off and let it uh, breathe a little bit before it can heal, you know? Yes. So I think that, I think that now as four women that are working together, not against each other, but harmoniously together, knowing what each of us needs and doesn't need to be able to do this together. Um, it was very important for us to come together and show solidarity with other women 
because we've met some amazing women across the United States every time we, or across the world, every time we tour, we meet women that are like, God, I'm going to know you for the rest of my life. And to bring people together and work together in that way, I think is really cool. And to see America doing that now and not standing for, you know, misogyny or bigotry or racism, all of that stuff needs to stop. So maybe it needs to come to a head, just like this weather in Florida, <laughs> and get really, really hot and uncomfortable until it pops and rains and it's better again. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so I think that that's what's happening. So we definitely had to say something because we were in Atlanta, Georgia, the night of the election in a red state, just like, what the fuck just happened? And, <laughs> you know, we cried for days. We were so sad just to see, you know, we're into an old black man at a gas station and we look at each other with the same look in your eyes like, fuck, <laughs> really? You know what I mean? Like, we've got to stick together. It's time for us to stick together. And it, and it was no more evident than it was, you know, right then and there. So going in off of that tour, we ended it on Thanksgiving. We went straight into writing the record and recording the record. So obviously those things were fresh on our mind and it was, it's time as four women to, to say some shit that's, you know, not just observational life. Yeah. Uh, you guys are, are, you know, well-known feminists. Um, did you, how did that, is that just who you guys naturally are or was that sort of, you know, all right, that's going to be our gimmick or, uh, I, that's why I was more, I was, I'm curious about that and, and how that came I was, I, I think that I've always been the kind of person that doesn't lead by, uh, Forced, I lead by example always. And I was I was raised by um, my mom and dad were together, but my mom was the breadwinner. My mom was the head of the household. I was I was raised in a very matriarchal home. So my example for women was a strong women, assertive women, women that get shit done, women that take care of shit. So my example was never. I'm this I'm this little flower that needs to be protected. You know, it was more like. You can be and do anything you want, so go and be and, and do everything you want. And and I was I grew up like that. I grew up with so many guy friends that never, you know, told me I couldn't do something because I was a girl. In fact, like, I was the first female in my neighborhood that was the paper boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, you know, and I'm straight. Like, I'm straight. I'm a, I'm, I always think that I'm, like, this tough little, you know, chick, but it's like, I still, you know, run silly and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could throw a ball and all that stuff, but it's like, I think for me in my way of, of being, I can't speak for the rest of my band because everybody's got different feelings about it, about feminism and that word. And it, it's definitely not a gimmick in our band. We are four strong, completely different people and women, you know what I mean? Like each one of us is, is different than the next. And the four of us together are like, so strong, so much stronger because we work together instead of against each other. Like there's no judgment or jealousy and all that stuff that happens sometimes when, um, you know, when there's a lot of women together and it's yeah. not even women's fault. It's like systematically we've been trained to be against each other and be in competition with each other. So it's, uh, it's a lot of new stuff that I'm figuring out because I didn't have a lot of, um, like I said, men, tell me that I couldn't do anything in my life. I've always been, you know, big, mm -hmm. you know, given a lot of, uh, encouragement. Has so was your father I, around? I, yeah. He was, was he, my like dad's a, a, my dad? dad's a musician. He, well, he was, he works off and on. He's a musician and he had problems with drugs and alcohol as well. So I got to see that firsthand, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, he was just, he was always the one that said, Stacy, it's your choice. You don't ever have to sleep with a guy if he wants to sleep with you. It's you that allows him to put that thing in you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's your choice. It's, this is your world, baby. Go out there and fucking rule it. That's what my dad told me. That's what my mom told me. So I was never told, like, you should be more girly. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. So, I mean, but, you know, different members of my band have had different experiences down to the way that families have treated them. You know what I mean? Like... Mm -hmm. So to, to come out fighting as, as females, females, females is not my, is not my thing, mm -hmm. but it is very important to my band to show, uh, 
the solidarity and that, yeah, women can do and, and are as equal as anybody. It's like not our fault we were born, born women. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we didn't choose this shit. So why do we have to be persecuted for it? There's no reason. And, and, and feminism really is equality across the board, period. Just because it comes from a female's perspective doesn't mean that we're some, a bunch of raging bitches that are like, fuck you, we, <laughs> for me. It's not like that. It's equality for all. And that's what we fight for, period. Well, that's, I have a lot of respect for you guys and, and, and in your struggle. Thanks. And I really, I, un- I understand. And, and I can definitely, I feel, you know, your struggle. And I'm proud of you. You know, I don't. I know I don't know you, but anyone who who can overcome addiction, sure, that is, you know, and, and speaking what's on your mind too. So, for sure, awesome. I can't help but be honest, dude. That's going to be like it's it's a it's a blessing and a curse. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I got to tell you, I disagree. You know, like <laughs> I don't want to, but I have to. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. Um, so. We're gonna we're gonna be in Pomona, and um, we put down for an interview Great. for you guys. Uh, Great! So I'm I'm definitely looking forward. Hopefully, we'll be able to meet again, and um, we'll maybe record some things um, in, in the press room. Uh, and I'm very appreciative. Cool. You've you've been nothing but a a, sta- a class act to you know. Even when I saw you Thanks. outside smoking, Thanks, and you were being so cool. <laughs> Thing, you know. <laughs> and I'm definitely, I've been singing your praises uh, for for a while, and um, I super appreciate it. I, I really, really appreciate it because we wouldn't be able to do this without people like you that get it and that care and that want to talk to us and learn, get to know us, and learn about us, and let other people know and learn about us. So, thank you. Well, um, I just want to say thank you to you guys, uh, to Fat Records, you know, for taking time for us. And um, go check sure. these guys out at, at any of the Warp Tours. You know, we're we're national, we're nationwide, uh, we're worldwide. But if you are in the states, uh, go <laughs> check these guys out. Uh, bad cop, bad cop. Definitely, they are. Every, I listen to you every single damn day. I, I promise you. Fuck that. yeah. Uh, <laughs> with without a shadow of a doubt, um, one of my definite favorites in music at this moment Dude, that fucking rule thank you so much um go check uh, what, what website what websites do you guys promote uh you go to our facebook you go, go to our instagram uh we're at dc dc music on twitter bad cop bad cop band bad cop bad cop on instagram bad cop bad cop band.com is our website we're all over the place you'll can, find us can you tell me the story about bad cop bad cop like, how did huh? you got the name? Oh, I, it was a, a joke between me and the original bass player we had. She's one of my oldest best friends and um, music partners. And we were going to, it's just been around for a long time. And then we always laughed about it. And then all of a sudden, we started this band and we're like, this is what Bad Cop, Bad Cop is. So that's what happened. And, uh, all right. Um, hold on. I'm reading something. Uh, um. All right, all right, here it is. Um, all right, never mind. I can't. I, I had a question. I, <laughs> I wrote it down. I didn't ask. Uh, do, are you still quite familiar or, or uh, friendly with your former band? My old band? Your old band? I'm friends with everybody. Okay. You, yeah, yeah, any, yeah. Any I mean, plans I still to, play music with them. Oh, you do? Yeah, Angry Every Tease, it's a confidence that we don't play all the time, but like, or even very often, but um, we're still great for, I'm still great friends with everybody I've ever played music with. <clears throat> nice. Okay. Well, thank you <laughs> so, so much, Stacey D. Um, totally. Bad Cop, Bad Cop, check them out. Warp Tour, uh, the, new, the new album, Warriors, out now. Give them a try if you haven't. Uh, their performance is stellar, second to none. And their music is freaking awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tim. All right, we'll see you. We'll see you in Pomona. Okay, great. Take right. it easy, guys. Take it easy. Bye. All right, bye.